All right, we are live. Michael Lafito here. Uh, welcome to the 32nd episode of our Luxury Lunch and Learn. I'm uh, really excited to have uh, Tammy Bunnell on today. And uh, before I introduce Tammy, just a reminder, if you have any questions whatsoever for Tammy or myself, please, uh, we're going to be streaming this to a couple Facebook groups. Please leave that uh, in the chat feature. And if we receive the question after the live broadcast, and it's meant for me, I'll get back to you or we will forward it on to Tammy. So welcome to the 32nd episode. Uh, Tammy, thank you so much for your time today. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, and you and I have known each other for 10 plus years and I've always been uh, you know, so impressed with your background and your work ethic. You're obviously one of the most uh, respected uh, leaders in the industry. Um, and we were talking a little bit offline before we started this and we were just talking about COVID-19 and, and mindset a little bit. Why don't we start with that, even though it wasn't something that we had uh, talked about, but uh, you know, based on your background and, and being a leader, talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on, you know, if you will, what you focus on expands on mindset based on so many uncertainties with what's going on today. Well, you, you know as well as I do, and I think that it's just a really good reminder for everybody else that mindset is four times as important as even the activities I'm in. If I'm not in a good mindset and I go out and try and sell, even to go list a property or um, go try and do business, my headspace is going to take over and I'm probably not going to actually get that listing or get the what I'm going after. But if I focus on my mindset first and I stay in control, I have a much better chance. We've all been through uncertain times, every one of us. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, some of them have lasted longer than others, right? And each time you learn something from it. But um, for me, I actually practice uh, what's called savers. So silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing, writing every morning before I start anything else. So I'm in complete control of my day. And before I go out to, if I'm going out into the public or anything else, I, I close my eyes and take 120 seconds and picture how I want the day to go and how I want those people to feel. And that, believe it or not, because I've been doing it for so long, um, it comes out almost identical to the way that I've envisioned it in my mind. But it makes you feel like you're in control of the day. I find so many people, they just rush out to whatever it is that they're going to do. So they haven't really planted themselves. You know, they haven't really given themselves firm planting. And um, the more I'm in control of where my headset is, the more successful I'm gonna be all day long. It's a, it's a great reminder. And I know it's sometimes easier said than done, but uh, I, I literally just saw something posted the other day with Denzel Washington. And, and he talked about, you know, if you, if you, you know, hang out with five overachievers, you're bound to be the six. If you hang out with, you know, f five, you know, uh, people that take care of themselves, you're bound to be the six. And the whole purpose of it is, you know, not just your mindset, but but your environment and, and who you right. surround yourself with, right? Win winners uh, surround themselves <laughs> with other winners. And um, that's, that's really important. So talk to me a little bit about uh, Exit Realty, for those that don't know about Exit, tell us a little bit about Exit Realty and then talk to us a little bit about uh, your role within Exit, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, so Exit Realty is a, a real estate franchise that was actually built on human potential. And that's just so dramatically different than what you hear, uh, you know, in other directions. But it really is about value equals income. The more value I provide for somebody, uh, the further up I'm going to go. And we really want to help people become the best version of themselves. And that is the number one focus. We're unique in the fact that um, we focus on giving back. We focus on the human element first. We don't focus on the balance sheet first. We focus on people first and balance sheet second. And it's always been that way. Even in the recession, the worst recession since the depression, we didn't lay one single person off because it would be against our mission statement. Our mission statement, you know, a group of professionals dedicated to providing a quality of life for their agents and the communities they serve, we can't speak out of both sides of our mouth. So we actually had to outsell and outthink our way out of the recession. And that proved to everyone from a leadership standpoint when we hit COVID-19 that we were going to lead by example again. And people can grow in an, in an environment where they feel like they can trust that environment, right? They feel safe in that environment. They're going to grow and they're going to take chances and they're going to take risks. So when COVID-19 started, 
we didn't, we literally went together and said collectively, and this is really important for agents and brokers as well, collectively know who you are as a company, who you are as an entity, so that you're always representing that. You're not all over the map. You are true to what it is that your business model is and true to what it is that you represent. So when COVID-19 happened and we were watching people lay off people like crazy and do it through emails or a broad Zoom call um, and all that, we didn't lay off one single person. We, and, and the, the amazing part this time is every person from the person that answers the phone to all of our trainers said, how can we be part of the solution? Everybody raised their hand because we demonstrated in 2008 something completely different, right? So um, they all raised their hand. So instead of laying anybody off, we didn't lay anybody off. We didn't cut anything. We actually came in with a stimulus package for our agents and brokers worth more than $50 million. And so we partnered with our partners to provide technology and tools that would help them to be able to do more business virtually. We provided education from every angle, um, literally um, listing and selling real estate, doing things virtually, uh, doing a virtual open house, doing a virtual closing, all the way to the tools that we provided for them to be able to engage with the consumer quicker so that while they're home, while they were sheltered in place, they could actually become more educated on the business, they would be able to ramp up and hit the ground running on, on the way out the other side. And that is dramatically different, but we wanted to arm our people and prepare our people and it's true to our business model, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other unique things we have is residual income. So if I introduce someone into the company, residual income, um, the best picture is the insurance industry. If I write an insurance policy this year, when they renew next year, I get paid again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, recording industry, uh, probably Friends is the biggest one, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm doing a television show that they're making millions of dollars on every time those shows uh, repeat, right? Um, so here it's do the work once. If I introduce someone into exit, an agent into exit, I receive the equivalent of 10% of the gross commission up to $10,000 a year every year for as long as that agent is with exit. As good as that is when I retire, benefits like real people with real jobs, I receive 7% of that income even in retirement. And if I pass away, 5% of that income goes to my beneficiary. So um, there's steady, consistent cash flow. So you'll notice with your, some of your friends from Exit that you're seeing them post, um, you know, I just got 10 e-bonuses this morning. So they're getting residual income, even some of them while they can't go out and produce right now. Right. And so it's providing them a ballast and steady, consistent income, but it creates an environment of everyone wanting to mentor each other and everyone wanting to share information and help each other grow instead of any type of cutthroat environment. It's much more empathy oriented and it gives them an opportunity to slow down before they stop and actually have some sort of a quality of life. You know, we notice, you, you know, that you and I are both ridiculously hard workers, right? So, sure, sure. Um, this gives them the opportunity to maybe take an occasional Thursday night off, maybe an occasional weekend off, and instead of going on vacation and saying, hey, two more emails and we'll go see Mickey kids, right, we can right. actually get the opportunity to um, have somebody cover for me, like attracts like, I'm probably bringing in somebody similar to myself. I can have somebody cover for me while I'm on vacation so I can actually be on vacation. Mm -hmm. And how much better are you? You just went on a vacation, right? Yeah, yeah. So how much better are you when you come back? You know, your right. mind's totally engaged. You're ready to go. You feel great about where you've left your family and everybody's in such a good uh, headspace. Sure. And you've come up with all these ideas because you've had some blank space to be able to do that. Yeah, that, that's excellent. And, and you mentioned, um, you know, go to Disney World to be with Mickey. What It's probably even better when you're at, with Mickey and at Disney World and you get an e-bonus. You get you get a close right. from somebody <laughs> you helped, right? That pays That's for true. it while you're gone. <laughs> uh, so a couple points I want to uh, come back to. So you had mentioned, um, so that first off, it's great that, you know, there were no layoffs uh, back in the recession and no layoffs within exit during this current downturn. Uh, this was a question I had later in the show, but since we were talking about it, in your opinion, how do you feel the current environment we're in now, right, where nobody knows the long-term ramifications of the unemployment and, and if wave two comes and all this, um, how do you see what we're in right now, 2020, different than the 2007-8 downturn? Well, uh, it's an incident related, that's probably the best term that I, I, part of my job is to be a good forecaster, right? And 
Um, I spend some time with economists, uh, National Association of Realtors, California Association of Realtors, along with people writing for the Wall Street Journal, et cetera. And I pay attention to what their, um, how proactive they are and what their response is. And the 2007, 2008 was a recession, the worst recession since the depression. Going back to headspace, part of it's in our head so that we actually made it la last even longer um, from a fear-based perspective. But this was incident related, right? It's an, it's an illness that came in. So similar to um, SARS, um, even Y2K, believe it or not, they're incident related. So typically in real estate, that makes us end up with a V uh, market. That won't be other industries, by the way. The mortgage industry and the real estate industry are going to do really well. They're going to pop right back up um, because there's a pent up demand and people will always need housing. We happen to represent something that people will always need, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and people move because of their circumstances. But there will be some other businesses that are going to be done differently and there'll be some new creativity that's come out of it that uh, we just haven't witnessed yet. But uh, we're not going to sit back and, and just wait for the world to run over us. Hopefully we've learned a tremendous amount about this and um, we can focus going forward on how can we do it differently if, if it does happen again in September, October, November, how can we do it differently so that we end up with different results? This was more um, denial, shock, panic, fear. Uh, and then finally everybody said, okay, wait a minute, we've got to pay attention to this. Uh -huh. um, but it also made the real estate market react incredibly well in being able to do virtual open houses and virtual closings, people that had pushback, like don't even touch me, don't even think about having this happen. And now all of a sudden they're accepting of that fact. Um, and you know that being said, because you see, I, I'm seeing disruptors like chomping at the bit, wow, this is so cool because we have this stuff. The consumer still wants, uh, we always use trusted advisor, but I use a different term and that's that they want you to be the solution. So. They want you to be the consultant that's going to give them really good advice and that you're going to really help them and add value. It's not just that you're a resource and you can give them information. They can find all the data they want. They're drowning in data, but they're starving for knowledge. And so they want you to feel out, you know, what are their real estate dreams? Where do they see themselves in the next one, three, five years? In their perfect world, what would they do? You know, if I was talking to you 10 years ago, right, while you were just getting started with a family and all that sort of stuff, have a kid buy a condo. So by the time that they're 18 and ready to go to college, you're paying for the condo, right? But if I'm talking to somebody um, that's in a different circumstance, I've got to find out what's really important. I did a um, talk probably almost uh, two and a half years ago or so mm -hmm. in the mid-Atlantic region. I was speaking in Washington, DC. And um, we had an agent that was going against three other people for a listing. And um, he came up to me afterwards and he said, I, I get what you're saying about uh, making sure I'm all things, but I, I'm just, I'm not sure what to do. And it was when Investing in Opportunities Act came out, right? Okay. And so, and no one was aware of it and no one was talking about it. And I was, I was talking about it. He said, uh, I said, do me a favor, look up your consumer, find out, um, look them up, try and friend them on Facebook. If they're on Facebook, connect with them on LinkedIn, Google them find out as much about the person as you can about the product so that you can go in and have a conversation from a different angle. Ask themselves, ask them about what their real estate dreams are. He found out he, that he was in his mid seventies and owned his own company. When do you plan on retiring? Um, what's your perfect world? Do you plan on retiring here? And when he went in and made the presentation and asked those questions, the gentleman that he was asking was, and he mentioned investing in opportunities act and everything else. Um, he actually suggested that he not list his property right now. He owned it outright and he was just trying to maximize. And he said, let's stay connected every month because that market's still going up. But where are you planning on moving? And he wanted to go on the water um, in the Carolinas. And he said, that's still going up too. So probably a smart thing is to purchase there. He taught him short-term rentals um, in the process and gave him opportunities to invest. Long story short, in two and a half years, he helped increase that gentleman's net worth by $2.4 million. Hmm. Well, now I've added value to that person, you know, value equals income, but I've also done way more than my job, right? And people will pay for that level of service, especially in luxury, right? Uh -huh. It's that experience economy and they want to experience, they want to have that amazing experience. They want to have it be a terrific experience and be served incredibly well. 
but they also want to have results on the other side. So I see us turning into much more of a consultative sale. Yes, you will have to be high tech, but if you're not high touch too, you're not going to be able to uh, demand getting paid what you should be getting paid. Yeah. And so I, I think we'll see some people that never really did very much. It's so easy to get into this business. It will sure. be harder for them to stay in it right. if they're not paying attention to both yeah. sides. Oh, I think you're right. So a couple points I want to uh, touch upon. Uh, you brought up uh, that were very good. So that agent you talked about, they brought so much value. They were, you know, they were a consultant. They weren't a salesperson. Right. So salespeople want to get the sale, put it on the market. Let's get it sold. But this particular agent talked about the pros and the cons and educated. And in all price points, particularly in luxury, that's, you know, that's really what it's about it's about trust and relationships and it's it's about the marathon it's not the sprint you know real estate agents are many are so transaction based next 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 and luxury in particular it's a longer sales cycle so building those relationships uh, bringing value so that when the time comes uh, you're top of mind awareness and sometimes in real estate you don't get the first opportunity right, right. there's an old adage you want to be the first born second wife third real estate agent sometimes <laughs> They go with the cheaper option or whatever it might be, but they circle back uh, if you keep that door open. Right. And I think that it's, you know, it, it is go going back to luxury. I think everyone wants a, a consultative approach. Nobody likes being sold. I like buying. So do you. Yeah. Right. But I don't want to be sold. Sure. Um, so making sure that you're asking the effective questions and when you really take it to a personal level so that you look them up and you can kind of find out what their personality profile is and where their priorities are. Um, now you're going to be able to provide the best service possible. You know, mm -hmm. if you just went in and went instantly for the kill, um, you know, this gentleman ended up doing a referral for the second home, sold the primary residence and actually helped him with five investment properties and taught him short term rentals. So, he made money on seven transactions by taking a step back and only thinking about my, how I am in this person's shoes, right? Uh -huh. He can do that all the time. And it actually, I think it makes it a lot easier during the process because it's, I'm not selling you anything. I'm having a conversation. We'll see if our business philosophies match. We'll see if this is going to be a good mix. And I'm going to make sure that I do enough homework on you personally and on the property so that I am going to have at least a couple wow factors that no one else is going to think of. You know, that's, a, that's a great point. And I know uh, Exit is really big with disc personality. You know, Angel yep. does a great job with you guys. So talk to me a little bit about, um, for those that don't understand, you know, there's Myers-Briggs, there's Colby, you know, one of the buzzwords you're seeing now is, you know, of course is uh, artificial intelligence. But one of the things that uh, Exit Realty is so, so good at is helping agents with uh, DISC personality. Um, and so talk to me just briefly about that and how you guys incorporate DISC um, for the agent level as well as maybe for the franchisees when they're recruiting. Right. And, and so it, DISC um, it is from uh, Dr. Robert Room and it originated there. And it really doesn't matter. They're all very similar in how they're utilizing, but it's looking at a personality profile. And the best way that I can describe it is to look at face and pace. So typically if I have a very serious face and I'm not smiling, you have to eliminate politicians and people that speak for a living because a lot of us smile even though that's not probably our normal nature. Sure. But um, so there are task oriented people and there are people oriented people. And so on the high scale, task oriented people are D personalities, typically a driver, that's the person that's gonna own a company, they'll run a company, run a business, run through the wall, right? Um, I personalities, um, very fast paced too. D's and I's are fast paced, big picture thinkers, but I's are all about, um, go back to I. <laughs> um, they're all about having fun. They're all about uh, relating to people. Uh, C personalities, which is task oriented, think more like an accountant, right? They're, they're concerned with every last detail, in, including safety and security small picture thinker and S personalities are, um, they care about everybody. They want to help everybody and, and they're completely people oriented, but small picture thinker. They're the one that's going to make sure that you don't trip and fall. Right? So, um, if you can look at face and pace, if I am fast paced, I'm probably a D or an I. And if I have a smile on my face all the time, chances are I'm an I or an S. And if I am serious more times and more straight faced, I'm probably a D or a C that helps you to at least understand. But, 
it teaches you how to relate to somebody the way they want to be related to instead of assuming that everybody's going to like the same things we like right so that you can actually have a conversation and get the most and the best out of that person it works amazing for recruiting um, and it even in hiring people and keeping them in the office and having them understand i tell uh, the people that are in my office here i'll say I, I tell them every time i hire somebody and i look it's okay to say to me when i run in with one run, giant run on sentence monday morning and go da, 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 da. i want to this this and this it's actually okay to stop me in my tracks and say i'm fine tim the kids are great we had an awesome weekend so that you catch me because that's just how my mind works right. and so but it's okay to stop me and now that you understand that we can actually make it comfortable and funny instead of they they don't want me to even show up right sure yeah i'm, I'm definitely a high d as well so uh, <laughs> I, I, I can relate. Uh, talking a little bit luxury, let's switch. You know, I know you've worked with agents from uh, all realms, from different regions. Of course, there's higher price points in certain areas. Uh, but, you know, for an agent that is looking to increase their average sale price and maybe break into luxury, um, any words of advice? Well, I'm going to give you a couple. Uh, Please. You know, first, you should find um, a, a dirty dozen. You heard me mention it before, Mike, yeah. right? But a dozen people that work on the business, not in it. Appraisers, home inspectors, insurance companies, mortgage companies. Number one, they're going to educate you. And you want, if you're, if you're talking about luxury, so that you understand the difference between um, a jumbo loan. You understand how, how they think. I recommend... Um, you know, you have the 30,000 foot view and I would pay more attention to economists, the Wall Street Journal and podcasts than I would to the National Association of Realtors because that's more midline, right? So that gives me the 30,000 foot view and gives me a picture on trends. Then I want to have a, a dozen people that work on or around the business, not in it so that I can be ahead of the curve. Maybe there's an opportunity that um, we're going to see a lot of zoning changes now because of COVID, right? And we're going to see some shopping malls turn into luxury condominium projects. We're going to see some turn into 55 and older. We're going to see some turn into places strictly for entrepreneurs that there'll be a central hub in the middle. But we're going to see some changes. So if I'm ahead of that curve, I have a whole lot better opportunity of getting the business, right? Um, the same with people in construction, that there'll be uh, people are moving further out and they want larger homes, which is kind of a, a, a shift because they're going to be able to satellite from home more often. This has proven to us that maybe they'll go in the office a couple of days a week and they'll satellite from home the rest of the time. Now they're gonna actually need more space and um, probably a lot of them are gonna spend more money. So part of that dirty dozen, um, just a few changes that I would make. Number one, I would make sure that I was tied to at least the area that I represent um, the planning board or municipality so that I could see if there were any zoning changes that I knew ahead of time. If I went in and had a conversation with you and I was the first person to talk to you about investing in Opportunities Act and I showed you how to um, get rid of 15% of your um, capital gains and, and literally divert it for seven years and show you how to invest the money and pay zero tax on where you invested the money, chances are you're probably going to shout that from the rooftops, right? Um, and you're going to tell all of your other friends and like attracts like. Same thing is going to be true here. If you see this window of opportunity, then... Um, and you see it ahead of time, you can go have conversations ahead of time so that you are in much more control. Go back to 2007, 2008, you probably wanted to make friends with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, right? Okay. Uh, so that you were uh, connected with asset managers. It's always staying ahead of that curve. One of the things we're seeing change dramatically as far as luxury goes is uh, the migration charts aren't making as much sense. We're going to see a lot of shifts. Part of that is COVID, that there are, we're seeing a lot of people move more inland, but a part of it is also climate change. And so we're going to see some, there are going to be some people that are diehards that it doesn't matter how many fires are there, they're still going to build their home in Malibu, right? And we're going to still see people that are going to be out on the ocean, even as the waters rise. Right. Um, you know, Miami's building the <laughs> streets higher. How long is that going to last? That's, a, that's another question for a different day. <laughs> but um, climate change is going to have a lot of these people uh, moving a little bit more inland. So I would pay attention to moving companies and not just moving companies that move um, individuals, but that move actual companies, because we're going to see a lot of these large corporations and most of those large corporations, if they're going to go where they're going to be, um, they're going to be the ones spending the money, right? right. And people that are in leadership for those corporations. So if they're going to actually have the opportunity to move further out because they have so many people satelliting, 
Um, but we are going to see so many different changes. We're going to see mixed use in commercial buildings that we've never witnessed before just because of what, what this has proven to us, that there mm -hmm. are a lot of people that can uh, satellite from home. So um, find a dirty dozen, a dozen people that work on the business, not in it, that are as driven as you. Google them, friend them on Facebook, connect with them on LinkedIn, and share with them what you have for goals. Do your 30,000 foot view. They'll tell you of anything coming up that they're aware of. And usually first in wins, right? So that you can right. be ahead of that curve. And um, so always having a dirty dozen, stay connected with them every four to six weeks, put together an action plan so that you're working on your business, not just in it, so that you're really concentrating on where the business is, where can I see windows of opportunity, listen to podcasts like yours. Um, if you're wanting to do luxury, be around everything that is luxury, right? Uh -huh. Be where they're going to be, um, be where people that are going to buy luxury, different restaurants, right? Different, different type of um, shopping habits, all those kind of things. But also um, surround yourself with listening to all of these people that, you know, you said it in the beginning and, and it's true, all boats rise to the same tide. People that listen to podcasts on a regular basis um, have a much higher income than people that don't, which uh -huh. Uh -huh. In, in, in just this short amount of time, but you're feeding your brain with really good information. And right. maybe it's just a couple bullet points that you're going to take out of it. But wow, um, talk about being able to learn this with literally like with a garden hose. I mean, not with a garden hose, with a fire hose instead of a garden hose by just hearing all this information and then taking down what's applied to you. Do the market analysis first so that you can see what is selling where you live in, in surrounding area because you don't want to go out too far. Right. Um, and so you find out what it is because there's going to be luxury that's waterfront. There's going to be luxury that's going to be high rise condos. There's going to be luxury that's estates. Um, but what it is relative to where you are and um, do the homework on what's selling, how often and who's selling it. Uh, you know, a lot of times those people will even have a conversation with you. A lot of times they even think it's kind of cute that you're interested in doing that. But people that are willing to do their homework will always do better. Great advice. Great advice. Uh, a couple of things you, you, you brought up, you're talking about, like, for example, in Chicagoland, the luxury market for Chicago had, had been soft for 10 plus years because these CEOs, they built homes, you know, with a little bit of acreage in the suburbs. And then a lot of these big corporations moved out of Illinois because it wasn't the most tax friendly. And so, you know, Wayne Gretzky says, don't go where the puck is, go to where it's, it's going, right? So same thing, knowing where the migration patterns are occur occurring, uh, know your feeder markets. These are all some really good tips uh, as well. So, um, And, you know, I would add um, right now, and obviously people are moving to lower tax states, uh, which makes sense. And so you, you, you're paying attention to that. But don't forget, uh, there's also a huge luxury second home market. And there's also a huge referral network. And think of how much education you can get by referring people uh, back and forth. So I live in Massachusetts. We lovingly call it Taxachusetts. And more people are moving out than moving in. So if I was listing and selling real estate here, without question, I would make referrals an automatic arm. I would make it an automatic part of my business. And if you're referring luxury out, chances are you're going to also end up with referring luxury in, but every single one of these people is going to teach you more about how to do it better. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And understanding the other markets where your clients are going, building relationships with referral partners, as well as trends, what's happening. Just like you mentioned that agent uh, for the gentleman that was looking to buy in, in North Carolina, understanding that that was a, a market that was going up in value. So it makes more sense to purchase now versus wait. Right. And his property, by the way, the property that he sold, he ended up getting $150,000 more than he would have if he had listed it immediately. Yeah. But the property that he bought the um, second home is worth $400,000 more than it was uh, when, when he purchased it. So, yeah. um, you know, that doesn't mean we're, we have a crystal ball and we can tell you everything. But if I look at a history and I give you as much information as possible so you can make an educated decision and I know where your priorities are, for some people in luxury, money has nothing to do with it. But for others, they want to know, okay, what are the biggest things that I can get a return on investment um, because I'm probably not going to stay in here, stay, stay here forever, right? Um, so wiser matters. Uh, the tax issue is definitely um, 
a huge advantage. But you know, there were really even simple things if you stay connected with people for the planning board and municipalities. Never mind the sure the shopping malls and the high rises and all the things that um, might be an opportunity. I'm actually starting to see some people luxury wise, by the way, that I think a lot of them are going to end up in um, Dallas or Chicago because they are going to want to have a condo there so that they can reach anywhere in the country if they're representing the whole entire country in one shot because they don't want to be on a million planes anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm starting to see some of those things. I live in a community that is pretty rural and um, it's all antique farm homes and um, so eight, late 1800s, most of the properties were built and a lot of them had an in-law apartment, which was actually for the farm help in the beginning. And then the parents moved into the apartment and the kids took over the farms, but a lot of people aren't taking over the farms anymore. And they ended up with somebody in the planning board that didn't know what they were doing. And so they said anything over 800 square feet for um, an ancillary apartment, we would, they were going to now consider this a two family. Uh, which made the properties worth a couple hundred thousand dollars less a piece. And we're talking about properties that are um, anywhere from five to 12,000 square feet, right? Big old, far big old farmhouses. So 1,200 square feet, 2,000 square feet, it's still nowhere close to a two family, right? It's just right. how their lifestyle is. And it just changed um, about a year ago. And when it changed, it impacted um, about 500 homes out of 3,000. So, uh, one of the agents went and knocked on the doors of, and told them, I don't know if you know this or not, but this is the difference in the value of your property from yesterday to today. And um, took a tremendous amount of listings with just one window of opportunity. So uh, a lot of times you don't know where that window is gonna be, but if, you're, if you have your feelers out at that 30,000 foot view, then with all these people that are part of your dirty dozen, um, and you're listening constantly, learning podcasts, et cetera, you're always going to be taking your business forward. And that makes you feel like you're in a lot more control and you're definitely more confident. And so that is going to come across when you're dealing with clients. Yeah, I tell agents all the time, when you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow, right? And if you're more confident, you're more likely to step outside of your comfort zone, which might include prospecting, lead generation, door knocking, you know, uh, doing some pr prospecting or uh, networking events in that zip code where you've never sold. And it might be that, that 90210 type zip code for your market. So uh, you've kind of hinted on this and directly and indirectly, but you know, for w when things do settle and, and we go back to our new normal, uh, those agents that are going to come out of this, you know, thriving and just succeeding like never before, uh, if you were to fill in the blank, are, are the agents, broker owners, team leaders that have blank in common? They have that mixed uh, qualities that they have. Uh, they are is strong on understanding the person and personalizing that business to that human being. And they are equally, so they're high tech, high touch. Very high touch that I'm in your shoes. I'm personalizing it to you but that I have the technology because people want to see that transparency, right? They want to see that they can see everything that's going on during the transaction and they want the ease of that transaction being as smooth as humanly possible. We've now proven we can do it, right? Going that we've been able to do virtual open houses, but that personalization, that's where you're going to get to. That's the worth from, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's a great point. So don't be a generalist, talk to the person, right? You know, right. Build those relationships. Uh, come from a empathetic standpoint you don't know where you know what, what they're dealing with oh by the way i i wore the closest thing i have to exit <laughs> green color today okay so the lighting doesn't do it much justice but this is this is a this is kind of the exit green okay uh, so the, the last question i have for you and by the way thank you so much i know uh you have so many responsibilities so to block off this window we originally were gonna do it a few weeks ago before our Griswold vacation. So thank you for your flexibility, Tammy. My pleasure. Uh, my, my last question would be, uh, you know, if an agent picks up and moves, they say, hey, listen, you know, we, we wanna move out of state or out of, to a complete new area. Uh, in your um, opinion, the two or three things that an agent or a broker owner should do in a new marketplace to hit the ground running, maybe when they don't have a database or sphere, what, what you know, one or two or three things would you recommend? Well, first do your homework on the market. So you know exactly what's selling there. And you can, the, if you're licensed there, you can get that data immediately, right? So mm -hmm. you wanna know that you can, if 
if I'm moving to a market and there's only a couple of things selling in, in, a, in a certain area or a certain price range, that's not what I'm going to start off with, right? I'm going to start off with an opportunity that is going to be larger than that. Uh, get entrenched into their community as much as humanly possible. And one of those ways is with the really connecting with a dirty dozen. Add value to their life first. That's the most important part. That's the easiest way to start something off when you're starting a new relationship. Uh, don't worry about the money. The money will show up add value to them right now. So if I wanted to find a really good mortgage person, who's the best mortgage person that's here that has an excellent reputation that everybody's utilizing, I'd ask those questions, right? Um, what's, who, who's the best uh, banker that's in this marketplace? Um, insurance, I'd introduce myself at the, to the board immediately so that uh, they know who I am and, and I would tell them exactly what my intention is and, and for sure ask for what their suggestions were. And then um, as I have this picture, I know exactly who and what I'm going to target market. You can, if once you get into the right habits and um, having that action plan, working on your business, not in it, planning the next six weeks in advance, which would be my last step. Um, once a month, halfway through the month, book about four hours to work on your business, not in it. Put together a schedule of everything that's happening within real estate or related fields so that you can actually be present as much as humanly possible so that people are literally, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. Um, you can really start to get to know that marketplace. So I know that there's going to be two luxury open houses this Sunday. I'm going to swing by both of them and I'm going to have the conversations with the realtors and I'm going to look at the property so that I get to know as much as humanly possible. I am going to get to know that market in that first month and I'm going to get to know people so quick that it's going to almost be assumed that I've been here for a really long time and they're going to see my, they're going to see my drive right away. Um, I bring what I need to learn, who I should be speaking to, um, and that schedule of events so I can really plan in advance. If maybe one of my dirty dozen is a mortgage person that has an excellent reputation, I might say, hey, do you mind if I come with you to this event? And now all of a sudden you're going to get the introductions you want um, in order to take it to the next level. Uh, but that'll help you to soften the marketplace. If, once you get good at this, you could literally be dropped off by helicopter or balloon anywhere in the country and succeed. But you have to be in these habits all the time. This has to be a consistent thing that you're doing all the time. That's the difference between somebody that does well and somebody that excels. Uh, great, great advice. And I'll never forget, you, you shared with me some advice, to me some advice years back uh, talking about, because you know I go to a lot of these conferences, I speak at some and I'm, I'm a guest at others. and. You, you said, hey, you know, figure out who's going to be there. And if there's someone that you feel like you can bring value to them and perhaps they can bring value to you, you know, you know, try to set up a meeting ahead of time since, hey, we're both going to be at the Inman Conference in New York and I'd love to sit down with you. And, um, and so I just want to thank you, uh, you know, for that advice, talking about being prepared, looking at the roster, figuring out who's going to be there ahead of time. And, and again, come from the standpoint of bringing value, right? And I, I tell agents the best way to get referrals is give them, right? Leave right. with a giving hand. Right. Um, cause there's a lot of takers, me, 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 what can you do for me? What can, and, and so thank you for that advice. And, um, what's the best way for somebody that doesn't know much about exit realty, they want to find out more information, uh, where should they go to find out more about exit realty? Well, they can go to exitrealty.com. Um, and, but we have a real simple, uh, if you can, uh, do text 85377. All of us have a mobile business card. So if you text 85377 and punch in T-A-M-I, you'll get my mobile business card. Perfect. But if you, text, if you text 85377 and put in 4MM, just 4MM and hit send, it'll send you a video of the four minute million. Um, and it'll send you to some links so that you can learn some more information. Um, and you know that's how we that's how that's how we all grow. All right, perfect. So four, and then the letter M is in Mary. M is in Mary. That's correct. All right, I'll I'll make sure I put that for those of you that are driving or whatever. I'll make sure I put that in the chat feature as well. Again, eight five three seven seven. Correct. Correct. All right, perfect. Awesome. Well, Tammy, thank you so much for your time. Um, we'll get you a copy of this uh, consolidated. Uh, <laughs> And uh, really appreciate where you're coming from. You know, you're, you're, you know, you're uh, a leader in the industry and it shows. So thank you for your time. Thank you. It was really a pleasure and it's nice to see you. Yeah, it's great to see you. Appreciate it. If there's anything we can do, don't hesitate. Thank you. Same All right, bye guys. Have a great Wednesday.
Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.